up with that? Who came up with select all that applies? I do not care who you are. When you have exams coming up, your heart will be pounding. Try to shut the noise in your head. Relax. 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 Hello guys and welcome to another video. If you are new, of course, my name is Andy. Welcome, welcome to the channel. So today's topic is um, a topic that was requested by someone and I'm going to read her question. This topic was requested by Grace Lavi. She said, I enjoy your videos so detailed to understand. I would like you to take us through how you studied NCLEX and passed. Um, the do's and don'ts of NCLEX. So I bring you today the do's and don'ts of NCLEX and how you can pass NCLEX. So we all know that NCLEX is the exams that you it's required nationally for the whole of United States. In order for you to practice as a registered nurse, you have to pass the NCLEX examination. If you um, did schooling here, most schools do provide review session where they bring someone from outside that does that specifically and they teach you um, basically summarize everything that you've learned so far in school and they go over the review questions with you at the end they'll give you an exams to write and pass and you can kind of see where you are even the school itself also have um, um, what is called an exit examination before they sign you off to go and take the boards, the NCLEX examination, you have to pass your exit examination. So, first of all, you're going when you do your school proficiency examination, I want you to take a, a look at your results, right? And look at the areas that you did really good and the areas that you did really bad. And even throughout your schooling, you will know the areas that you are kind of strong at and the ones that you are not. For me, it was pediatric. If you haven't listened to my story, I have a video talking about how I never was one, one for Pete. And my first job as a nurse practitioner actually ended up being in a pediatric clinic. So you never know. So my weakest point was pediatrics because i just didn't care for pediatrics i didn't like it i felt like it was too complicated the ages the stages and ages what they do at this age and that age just because you have kids doesn't mean that you're gonna gonna like pit i did not and i struggled with pit and i actually studied to studied to pass pit pediatrics um i didn't really study because i cared about it i knew that i needed to pass it i didn't have a choice it was more of I don't have a choice kind of a thing so you want to look at yourself and see which area areas you're weak at with your um, exit exams and your general um, studying time um, just kind of figure out which one when you when you discover which area you're, you're weak at make sure you put 70% of your effort on that area or go back to your books look at the the notes that you made for that area your number one step is to know you know your strong areas your strong and your weak areas when once you know that half of the work is done the next step is you're gonna create a study plan you're not gonna make it you're not gonna be successful if you don't have a plan everything requires a plan in life even in your personal life for you to be successful you have to have some sort of plan so you're going to create a study plan and this study plan is going to be is going to include practice of questions right decide do i want to practice 50 questions a day 100 questions a day there is no day that should pass by that you haven't gone over questions my school provided us with kaplan so i had kaplan i don't know i think they have different um different type of review um tests and questions um and, and and you can pick anyone that you're you know comfortable with i because my school did kaplan i did kaplan i did a couple of other ones um so what i did is i had the app on my phone i had the book itself that because me i love books too even though you know this is the age of electronics um on the go i'll use my phone on while i'm sitting whether i'm sitting in the car whether i am you know sitting 
waiting for something, sitting at the doctor's office. I have my app that had my review questions. So all I did is click on the app and I just pick an area and I go, go over. Another area that I felt like I needed more help was psychiatry. And if you know, you know, I don't like psych. So I, I needed to go over those questions a little bit more. So while I'm sitting at the doctor's office anyway, waiting in line, I'll just open the app and I'll just be going over questions. And the good thing is when you do the questions, wherever you stop, you can actually pause it and continue from where you make sure that a day there is no day that ends without reviewing without you reviewing a question if you have um somebody that you're studying with maybe a classmate a roommate or somebody that you know study mate make sure you meet up once in a while i met up with people for my board exams both np and um rn and i just go over question all we did was questions and what i noticed that when i went over it with someone we bounce off ideas it sticks more because i remember and i hear their voice you know when we're going over this and maybe I got it wrong and they're like oh this is the answer and why that the answer that is the answer don't don't focus on getting them right focus on the rationale behind the answers because it's not about only getting them right you have to actually know why that question is right there's a lady now that I'm actually thinking about it that I did her review thing I think she's on Facebook I will look for her and I will put her stuff too. Um, I actually did her stuff. She was so good. I mean, she made it so funny. I did it on a Sunday and I did it online with her. It was a live interactive session um, that I did with her. And because she was so funny, her voice kind of stuck in my head. The things that she said until today, I still remember those things just because of the way she said it. So I did that car plan and I did that one day with her like a couple days before I made sure that I scheduled it a couple days before my exams okay so when you create your study plan you have to put a target date for your exams you can't just leave it open right when you have a target date it helps you walk towards that target date you're like thinking you know even when I did my board exams me and my one of my uh, schoolmate my my classmate my colleague we had a target date and we said we actually ended up taking the exams the same day go figure right but we had a target date and we both nailed it on that day and you know we were meeting up and in, in reviewing i was meeting up with someone else and reviewing so you know those things like that and even after i took mine um i i, I still reviewed with someone that did not take their own yet yet again you make sure that you create a study plan have a target date on your exams because it's going to help you keep your goal you have to have a target date in order to meet your goal the next one is that you have to be confident exam stresses people out i don't care who you are i do not care who you are when you have exams coming up your heart will be pounding you'll be you'll be thinking about it you'll be thinking about it oh my god am i gonna make it try to shut the noise in your head it's not easy but try as much as possible take a deep breath you know pray just it's, it's gonna be okay look that day will come whether you like it or not as long as we are living as long as we live on earth that day you scheduled your exams for will come and make sure you take the step to actually schedule your exams don't just have a target goal don't just have a target date without scheduling when once you pay for that exams like this and you click bloom they send you that your att authorization to test that's it now you know i mean you can always change it but how how many times are you going to change it let's be honest okay so when once you have the date that date is coming whether you schedule it three months from now, six months from now, I don't, um, I don't encourage people to do it too far off from when they graduate because when you do it too far off, you start losing things, you start forgetting things. So I, I encourage people to do it within at least within six months. I always do it within three months. When once I finish school within three months, I have to take my exams because then everything is still fresh in my head and I still have that adrenaline rush of school of just taking my exit exam so i'm like boom 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 let's do it i know people that do it within a month so it depends on how you're prepared check yourself don't let anybody rush you but make sure that you don't go past six months because then once you go past six months everything past six months is chronic 
okay acute is three months less than three months six months now it's chronic okay so you don't want to be chronically trying to take your exams so you want to move out of that don't make, make sure that you don't go past three, six months because you're going to forget things okay when it comes to the day of your exams even the day before your exams make sure that you have a good night's sleep again that test anxiety will come up but make sure that you try to sleep try to sleep because you don't want to be taking your exam sleepy the next day make sure you go to sleep early you relax yourself i don't study the day of the exams because the nervousness kicks in anxiety kicks in and you start doubting yourself i don't it's a rule for me um i try to put my exams very early in the morning i don't put it later in the day because that urge of studying before your exams will come i don't so i try to put my exams the latest is 10 a.m if i have my exams at 7 a.m if i'm able to put it at 7 a.m if i'm able to put it at 8 a.m between 8 7 a.m and 10 a.m is when i schedule my exams because i want to you know go pray go to sleep wake up in the morning take a shower you know pray take a shower put on my clothes walk into the exam hall because whatever you study whatever you know is what you know forget about what you're trying to figure out that one hour before your exams you're just gonna create more anxiety for yourself personally that's what i think so i get up in the morning i just you know pray shower boom go take my exams and i'm done i think my ankle is peeing i think i had i took it up to like 80 when my egg clicks are in, cut me off at 75. Okay, does it mean I did too well? I don't know. It could be that I, I, I was bordering between, so they just cut me off, or, you know, I did well and they cut me off. You never know. But, you know, I didn't study that morning anymore because, you know, whatever you have, whatever you know is what you know. So just get up eat well if you're someone that eats breakfast so you don't go there and you're hungry and you're now thinking why didn't i eat some people get too nervous they don't eat i'm not really a breakfast person it's now that i'm actually i don't know how i'm trying to eat breakfast but before i never used to eat breakfast so those times that i did my exams i was never a breakfast person so i just get up and go because that's just me but if you're someone that eats make sure you eat if you're someone that likes coffee make sure you take your coffee relax 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 what it is is gonna be what's gonna be it's gonna be the main thing is making sure that you're studying don't don't go partying don't go playing a day goes by you don't review your stuff and you think you're just gonna walk in there and pass no but when once you study and you you are confident you when you see those things make sure that you're also studying all that select all that apply i hate it select all that applies oh my god oh my god oh my god who came up who came up with that who came up with select all that applies i don't like it but you don't have a choice i didn't have a choice we don't have a choice you know select all that applies it's so confusing but you know make sure you practice it i had to practice it a lot just because i knew that i wasn't that good at it and i didn't like it so i studied you know the things that you're not good at make sure you're putting energy to study for it okay so i studied all that select all that apply select all that apply and sometimes i will miss i mean <laughs> <clears throat> and then I'll do it again and did it and did it. So I got better and better and better and better and better. I'm telling you, if you do 75 to 100 questions every single day, and in those um things are divided in sections: psych, pediatrics, women's health, uh, gerontology, um, you know, neurology. So make sure you hit each section. If you do 75 to 100 questions a day. I guarantee you, you're going to pass your NCLEX. In all of my exams, um, I pass them once, not because I'm better than people that did it twice. I know someone that did it up to three times. Um, I don't think I'm better than them. I think it's just 
the way you study and it's just an individual there are people that have what is called a test anxiety where they they get anxious when they see a test and you know they they they, they get confused on what what to pick it's not because they are not good uh it's not because they don't know what they're doing but because they get overwhelmed by test anxiety and test anxiety is real okay so if you know that you're you have something like that then that's something you should also prepare maybe talk to your doctor about it there are things that you can take on the day of your exams to kind of calm you down to to help you focus and study or if you're someone that prays um prayer helps a lot that's something that you can also pray and ask god to help you to kind of help you calm down focus and take your exams so if you're studying for your NCLEX now, I wish you good luck. Okay, don't forget to like this video, share, subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Until my next video, I love you with the love of God.